Here I have glued all the segment pieces and glued them onto a face and I'm making a cannon. I have to apologize about the video quality. In this first part I had my tripod leaning against the workbench to get a close-up filming and of course the autofocus was going a little crazy. As you can see it's not quite as round, I've got a bit of a wobble in this. So I was uh, shaping it round, but also the segment pieces are only about three or five eighths of an inch thick, if that. And uh, I started to realize that it's getting kind of thin, and I didn't want to pop through the the base, this green piece that I've got, got here is part of the base and it's solid, so that was okay. But you'll see me here, I start taking back the tailstock and checking my depth and how thick my walls are. And I don't know if I'm able to see it, but you can see it's thicker on one side than the other. It's a good thing it wasn't a bowl. I never would have been able to hollow it out, but it just blew apart. I can see why many of these fellows blew their segment rings right on the lathe. I don't have to set up a gluing block and a press. I made this basically out of spruce. I used some old two by sixes and eights and I took some two by two ends that I had kicked around and I cut them down to an inch and a quarter wide or square and then I cut them in half and then I took them over to my segment sled and I cut the segments so they're about an inch and a quarter tall each one of these segment ends. Checking that inside again. I'm just truing up the end a little bit. Smoothing it off. And sorry about the focus. And here we go to sanding. I only sanded this to 180 grit. I mean, it's going to go outside anyways. Here I'm putting beeswax on to seal it. And adding some and pushing it around and now I add some linseed oil then to help that linseed oil dry I did add a coat of shine juice which is shellac alcohol and linseed oil the alcohol helps to dry it up and I did use a little friction there to now this is the top and I, my camera was dead so I didn't get a chance to show you how I shaped the top part but that's all plywood basically. Um, I had a piece of plywood laying around and I cut it. To create this top I actually glued several pieces of 3 8 plywood together. How about six of them? I cut them six and a half inches square down to three inches I believe it was and then I used the compass and mark it out in the circles and cut them around before I glued them. They had a hole, I drilled a hole in the center so I used my, uh, I used an Allen wrench that's the same size as the hole and I set them all on there and 
I glue them together. And now I'm just hollowing it out so the birdies inside will have a little more headroom. I only sanded the inside. I did not add, add any sealer or anything to the inside. Uh, I don't want the birdies to get sick or anything, but I guess I could have used some linseed oil or something. But I didn't bother. And here's a little real time turning. Well, I round off this piece of 2x2. Two two. This spruce is very soft. turns very nicely but you get a lot of tear out and stuff but then again it's very easy to sand too so. this piece I'm making a ornamental finial I don't know if they call it finial I don't know if put them on the bottom but the bottom of the brittles making an ornamental finial that will hang from the bottom of the vertex. These bird houses are small for the smaller birds like the ram and the chickadee. I only draw, draw the entry hole at either an inch and eighth or an inch and a quarter. That way it's hopefully too small for the sparrows to get into. But also these houses are small enough that the sparrows may not even bother with them. But the rams and the smaller pinches use them. real time. Now I'm back to speed this up a bit. Here I'm using a 3 8 spindle gouge. This is just a scraper, curve scraper of sort. And then back to the spindle gouge. The shaping on this. Carbides work too, but uh, they're a little harder to control on the smaller stuff. I don't have the smaller carbide bits. So. And here I'm just taking down the ends so I have like a little dowel to put in the bottom hole. And this is going to be a functioning ornamental piece for the top where I will draw a hole through to put a string or whatever to hang the bird house inside. Well, like I said, I say that most of this stuff to 180. And then you seal it with beeswax and linseed oil. And then the coat of shellac just to help dry things up. Or the shine juice. and put together get a shot here like this so you can see it on those holes you see in the roof is where I, where I was going to put some screws in but the walls of the birdhouse were so thin I couldn't really get a screw in there so I glued it on 
Unfortunately, that makes it more difficult to clean out the old nests. But here I hung it by the front window just to get a better look, but the lighting isn't so great. One wren birdhouse, ready to be hung up outside for birds to go for and make a home. It is spring, and they are making nests. I see them out in the backyard running around gathering grass and string. Some still shots for you.